Join me right now on Kumite TV is UFC light heavyweight Eric Anders. What's going on, Eric? Hey, what's going on, brother? Nothing much. Just uh, catching these PFL fights that they got going on right now. Okay, okay. Um, right now, you know, big in the news is Elias Theodora, a former opponent of yours. You know, he, he got cut after losing one fight. You know, what does that say about the state of the UFC right now and, you know, the fighters that they pick and choose to keep with the promotion? Man, you know, it's a, it's a business. So, you know, how, how do you make a business work? You put butts in the seats and, you know, um, you know, my man went eight and three in the UFC, ultimate fighter winner. So, you know, he's had a pretty good career, but, you know, he's just not entertaining. You know, I don't think the people like the way that he fights. Uh, even when him and I fought, they booed him uh, in Toronto, and you know that's where he's from. So, you know, I've never been booed. People like the way I fight, meet in the middle, and 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 stand and trade, and you know that's what people like. That's what people want to see. So, you know, um, you know, I, I think that he'll be successful elsewhere, wherever he ends up. Uh, but you know, the, the UFC wants entertaining fights. Definitely, man. Well. So speaking of entertaining fights, you know, your last fight, UFC 236, a couple months back. Even though you had a rough night, you know, it was an entertaining fight. You took some damage in that fight. What was the extent of the damage, and how long did it take for you to recuperate? Um, Man, you know, uh, he tenderized my leg a little, you know, a pretty good bit. So, you know, I probably sat down for a week, which is, you know, pretty typical for me after a fight anyways, you know, just because... You know, I just want to rest, recuperate, chill, uh, and hang out. So, you know, after about a week or so, I was up, back up to training and whatnot. There was a lot of MMA pundits, and I saw that, uh, you know, one of the most famous ones is Brendan Schaub. He kind of criticized your corner for not throwing in the towel. What are your thoughts on him and, you know, the rants that he's put out about that? Uh, man, you know, I really don't watch anything that he does, and, you know, he's not me. If my corner ever throws in the towel for me, then, you know, they're probably not going to be in my corner anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they know me. They know the way I compete and the kind of competitor I am. And as long as I can and, I, you know, I can still compete and go out there and fight, then that's what I'm going to do, you know, regardless of how, you know, each round goes. So, you know, I'm glad he's not in my corner if that's how he feels. You're getting back into the cage on June 29th. Why did you decide to not take that much time off and just get right back into it? Man, I never say no. You know, uh, Venetius' uh, opponent got hurt. They called me, and, of course, I said yes. You know, this is what I love. This, you know, this is what I do. So, you know, I take every opportunity to do it. Yeah, Venetius is your next opponent. You know, it's completely different style from most of your opponents that you've had, you know, in the UFC. Looking at it stylistically, People see you as the favorite. Do you see yourself as the favorite going into this fight? Man, I think I'm the favorite in every fight that I've been in. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just uh, up to me to go out there and deliver. And uh, man, I think I'm more than capable of going out there and getting a win, getting a finish. Uh, and it's certainly, uh, you know, on my to-do list. You know, when I go out there and fight, I'm always looking for the finish. Uh, changing up uh, the training a little bit, you know, not necessarily – trying to put so much power on every punch, but uh, looking to increase the volume and uh, sure as, you know, the, the knockout will come as, as a result of such. You're sitting in Birmingham right now. Are you finish your, finishing your camp there? Yeah, I, I've done my whole camp here. I went out to uh, Vegas for like two weeks, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, but that was more so to, to me with a, a hypnotist, the same guy Khalil saw before we fought. Um, Man, just heard a lot of good things about him. Saw how he really changed uh, Khalil's mental uh, outlook on, on his fighting. So, you know, hopefully he can do the same for me. You know, there is no doubt that you're mentally tough, but going to this hypnotist, how has it changed you? Um, man, you know, we really worked on the, uh, the visualization part of uh, an aspect of fighting. You know, I, uh, you know, my first, you know, 10 or so fights, man, I could, you know, uh, visualize fight so vividly like I would get a adrenaline rush, I would get goosebumps um, but for whatever reason man, just have, I had a really tough time like, you know get myself there um, these last few fights and it's funny because some of the stuff that I would see um, you know, whether it be a dream or I just you know, kind of zone out in the middle of the day you know, actually manifest in, into the actual fight but uh, for whatever reason, haven't been able to get back there so, 
you know, working with him, you know, I, I've been uh, visualizing and seeing stuff uh, probably more vividly uh, than I have in the past, which, you know, for my opponent, it's not a good thing. Before working with him, did you have doubts about hypnotism? You know, because a lot of people don't believe in that stuff. Well, man, you know, I thought that he was going to sit there and try and wave, wave a, a watch in front of my <laughs> face. You are getting very sleepy. But, you know, it, it wasn't that at all. You know, he didn't, like, make me bark like a dog or, you know, quack like a duck or whatever that stuff you see on TV. And, man, you know, I talked to guys like, uh, you know, I actually talked to Khalil, uh, you know, after the fight. I knew him before the fight. Um, Julian Marquez, you know, the guy's working with uh, Dominique is the hypnotist. He's working with so many people. And, uh, man, just, you know, watching the film on Khalil, and uh, observing his mannerisms and behavior before a fight and then actually fighting him and see how, how different they were. I think that was the biggest, you know, aspect uh, of his game that changed. You know, a lot of people think that the, think that the time he spent in uh, Thailand and the technique. But for me, I think that uh, his biggest change was his mental approach to the game. And, you know, I think that's maybe something I've neglected and, you know, just taking my power for granted, think I'm going to go out there and knock everybody out. Um, so, you know, it's just something that, uh, you know, I, I took a few steps back and, you know, really wanted to work on the mental side. You were out in Vegas, you know, for a couple weeks, and then you were spotted in L.A. at Wild Card Gym, and you took a photo with Freddie Roach. You know, people ran with that, and they're thinking all these wild things. You know, tell us what happened. You know, what, what, what kind of work did you get in with Freddie Roach? Um, man, you know, uh, I walked into the gym and it was funny because, you know, you would think a dude like Freddie Roach isn't just standing at the front desk, you know, uh, just talking to people and, uh, man, you know, him and I linked up, you know, uh, talked for a long time, had a good conversation and, uh, didn't realize what a fan of MMA he is, but, uh, man, the dude's just so knowledgeable about combat sports and he trains a lot of good guys, so. You know, I figured I'd shoot my shot and get some work, too. What kind of work did you get in? You said that you're focused more on volume. Did he kind of give you tips on that and not putting power on into into every shot? Yeah, just technique, uh, volume. Not every punch has to be a, a, a power punch. Um, not a whole lot of technique. We just had a little mid session and, uh, you know, got some good work in. All right, of course, every fight is a big fight, you know, and this time around, you know, a lot of people believe that your back is against the wall. Do you not feel that pressure? Do you just go in here, you know, since you are working with that hypnotist, does it help you a lot and relieve that pressure that's coming in? Man, you know, I really don't feel like I'm under a lot of pressure, you know. Um, I've, I've got enough uh, residual income that, you know, I can stop fighting today and me and the family will still be straight. So I think a lot of guys, they feel the pressure that, uh, you know, if, if, if they don't make the money or they get cut, then that's it, you know, then they got to go back to the desk or whatever. But that's not the case for me. Um, my wife, she also works and makes good money. So, you know, we're going to be good regardless, man. It's just up to me to go out there and have fun, implement the game plan, impose my will, um, and, and have fun and, and uh, you know, do what I do. Talk about something else, you know, that's going on in MMA right now or in the UFC. You know, Walt Harris, he made a successful return to the UFC last month. He, but he was suspended by USADA, even though he proved that it was a tainted supplement. Does it make sense to suspend a fighter that proved no wrongdoing? Um, man, so that's a hard question for me to answer because I know Walt personally. And I know that he's not a cheater and he wouldn't do that intentionally. Um... So I think it needs to be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. You know, he is, uh, I believe he's going to litigation with the with the supplement company. So, you know, when you see guys like him and Romero actually taking legal action, you know, it makes it hard to believe that they did it intentionally. You know, so, you know, you see guys who just take their, take their sentence and, and lay down. It's like, mm. I don't know, because if I didn't, you know, if I if I got popped for something and I didn't do it intentionally, then I'm gonna explore every avenue to clear my name, if you will. Uh, so, you know, I see guys like Walt Romero doing that, so it, it makes it even harder to believe uh, that they actually did that. Yeah, I hope Walt gets fifty million dollars. To be honest with you, I hope he gets you know more money oh, than he yeah, can spend for yeah. the rest of his life. Yeah, you know if. Uh, 
if, if he gets if he if he makes that the uh, Romero money, then I think him and I are both gonna retire. <laughs> All right. Uh, one last thing before I let you go. You know, sports movies have always been big for every person that loves sports growing up. You know, for example, me, my one of my favorite movies growing up was The Program. What was your f- favorites, you know, growing up sports-wise? Um, man, you know, I really, you know, I was in, really into football when I was young. So uh, movies like Remember the Titans, uh, Remember the Titans was a, was a really big one. Uh, not so much that it was based on true events. Uh, but the movie itself, like, seems real. Like, you know, you watch Rocky, he gets his ass whooped for 10 rounds and then, or 11 rounds and then comes back and puts together a combination to knock the dude out in the, in the, in the, in the, tw- in the 12th. And, you know, coming, being in that situation, you know, it's not very likely that that happens, you know, getting beat up for two rounds and then coming back in the third round. Although I will say the third round was my best round against the uh, round tree. I probably still lost that round, but. You know, it, um, I guess now that, you know, going through that, it kind of makes more sense. But, you know, the uh, Remember the Titans is uh, one of my one of my favorites. All right, man. Well, June 29th, UFC on ESPN3, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Always appreciate the time, Eric, and uh, good luck to you on your future. Hey, appreciate it, brother. It's always a pleasure. Hey, what up, guys? It's your boy, Eric Anders. Uh Special shout out and thank you to uh, Infinite CBD keeping me supplied for all my recovery needs and uh, Rev Gear for uh, you know keeping me supplied with the best gear in the in the game.